Hi guys, um, today's video I'm going to walk you through um, a panel that I've heat embossed and coloured in um, and just make a quick card but I'm going to explain what I did on the on the panel. Um, so I'll just walk you through the stamp sets and, and um, ink that I've used. Um, this is an old My Pink Stamper Everyday Occasions um, stamp set and I'm going to make a sympathy card. Um, not that I need one, but and I always feel weird when I make them because it's not ever a, a nice time for anybody. So um, I thought I'd just use this. I thought it lent itself to something like a sympathy card. Um, when you see the image, you'll, it should hopefully make sense why I chose it. Um, so that yeah, so that's that stamp set for the sentiment. And then I'm using the um, Stampin' Up! Uh, Lovely Lattice Celebration stamp set. Um, and uh, this is, um, I think, until the end of, what are we on, the 13th? Um, till the end of March 2018, uh, 2019, sorry. Um, this is part of the celebration um, items that you can get if you spend £45 or more. Um, or for every £45 you get a free something to choose. Um, so I chose this one because I thought that this technique that I'm going to show you lent itself to this. Uh, this stamp set lent itself to that. So um, there's no sentiment in here so that's why I've chosen another sentiment set. But if there was one you could use the, the whole stamp set. So if you've got a stamp set that's got sentiments in there you can use that whole stamp set to create your card. Um, you know, you don't need to have, you know, separate sentiment stamps, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, so this is the stamp set, a uh, stamp that I used. Um, I've got an acrylic block here, um, and the stamp on it. Um, and what I did, um, I'll go through that in a minute. What I did was I used four of the new to me um, inks. So I've got Highland Heather, um, Balmy Blue, Soft Sea, F Soft sea Foam, I'll say that three times fast, um, and Petal Pink. And i got to say, the new ink pad, these are new, the new ones. You sort of open them up like that and then slide them in. Um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about them. The old ones, I'll just show you here. The old style ones, you can see they're very different. Um, I found that when I wanted to do this watercolouring technique, I could just press like so and it would put some ink on the, the I guess what is the bottom of the, the pad and then you could just use that as a water palette. Um, I found, I tried to do that with the new one um, and I just couldn't get them to do that so it's like there's no give um, so it's not a big deal really um, but that was something I wanted to try and obviously I didn't want to press too hard and I didn't want to break it so <laughs> so I didn't so what I did and what you can do as well I have a Tim Holtz media mat here and it's a glass mat so I just used there's a white section on this side and I just sort of opened the stamp set and then just smushed a bit down like that um, of each of the colours and that's my water palette. Um, what you could do is you could use a white tile, you could use a a plate as long as it's, um, I would go for like a white if you can because that way you've got the truest colour. Um, you could use an acrylic block as long as you put say a white piece of paper or um, yeah as long as you've got like a white even just copy paper if you put the copy paper underneath it it will then you'll see those colors much easier um, obviously like this you wouldn't be able to see the colors as easy especially if they're very pale like this um, what else could you use if you've got any watercolor palettes you could try and use them on there um, you basically need a flat non-porous surface um, to, to use them on so that's that's the aim of that or if you've got any of the um, 
mixed media kind of um, heat proof mats they they usually use they work really well um, I think Tim Holtz has got one tonic have got one um, can't think of the other company but anyway so that's what I did I put the colors down so I had all four colors on this side here um, this is a piece of um, WH Smith's um, they're like a book and stationery store here and um, this is their own brand of uh, watercolor card and I really like it um, I've got their mixed media card stock I've got their watercolor I've got their um, acrylic paper as well and it I really like the how it copes with with water because I tend to overdo things like that um, so I this was actually a scrap piece that I had so the ends and everything were really wonky so what I did afterwards is I die cut it with just a, a square um, it happens to be a stitched square um, die you can easily just square it off yourself or start with the right size piece to start with um, I kind of winged it the other way around and I kind of used what I had and then made it work for the card but what I did was I took the stamp that's actually upside down I took the stamp and I stamped it I did use a stamp positioner because I wanted to make sure that I got a good impression um, and I stamped it in using Versamark which is a clear sticky ink um, it's basically like a glue ink if you like and um, I then used some white embossing powder sprinkled that over the top and that gave me and hopefully you can pick it up it is quite pale unfortunately um, but in real life it looks really pretty um, so I don't know what angle you're going to be able to see that but hopefully it will pick up so I then heat set the embossing powder and that gave me the image to work with and then with the palette that I put on this side of my mat I then used a this is a Derwent brush pen water pen it's got water in the barrel here um, and it's just this is the number two it's obviously well loved <laughs> I don't actually get on with these very much but I decided that I it was a small enough image I was just playing around with this I wasn't planning on making a card with it or anything like that I was just having a play and I think that's the best way to do this sort of thing is just play with your ink play with your stamps embossing whatever it is and so um, I thought I'll just try it out again and it wasn't too bad this time um, but you could easily use some water and a paintbrush and I actually find I have more control with a wa water with water and a paintbrush as opposed to this sort of style where you've got the water in the barrel here um, but I'm getting I think it's also me getting used to the actual pen style of it and then I literally just painted all the different areas again I don't know how well this is picking up because it's quite pale but I used the petal pink if I put this like this I'll just point it out I used petal pink for the actual flowers I used the soft sea foam for all the leaves so you can see that the balmy blue I used for the lace in the background and then the highland heather I actually used as you can see around the outside and um, it's it's really easy what I would do with a highland heather the rest of it's quite easy because obviously you just follow where that image is and where you want like the flowers you just want to stay within the flower line and what happens is the embossing powder will resist the the water or the ink uh, the paint uh, the ink sorry and so it just helps to keep it in that area that you're painting and then if you want to add more color or more depth or a different color then once you let it dry so you paint your flower go off and do all the leaves and then when you come back that should be dry enough that you can then add more color if you use the same color it will just add more depth and give it more of that watercolor look that is what we watercolor for <laughs> um, and then for the outside I just would pick up the ink and then just sort of move it away from the edges 
um, and just being careful to get all the little bits in the middle there um, so that it looks like it's sitting where it should be. Um, the other thing I did do um, is I at that point die cut it so that I had um, you know the actual finished area if you like if you've already pre-cut the size you want then you don't need to do that um, so when I die cut it I then used this little brush now this is a makeup brush there is a brand a craft brand out there I um, a can't get it in the UK and B it's for me it's quite expensive so um, I, I just tried to find another way of sort of replicating the same thing now this kind of looks exactly the same <laughs> kind of looks exactly the same it's not even English it pretty much looks the same as the the, the branded you know the craft branded one and if you can get them because they come in a pack of 10 I think um, these were just off Amazon but basically this is a an oval it's about one inch and it's an oval foundation brush I think that's what I put into Amazon that's where I got it from um, so it's just check your local stores but basically it's like a quite a dense like the the, the um, bristles are quite closely packed so they're quite I don't know it's, it's lovely I could sit there all day doing that <laughs> um, but I used one of these and the nice thing is I then took some of the ink not the watercolored ink because you don't want to pick up the water that's there you just want the ink so I went straight to the pad with a brush you can use a blender tool you can use like Tim Holtz blending foams you can do all those sort of things those little mini daubers any of that sort of thing will work and you're literally just gonna brush it on like that it's that easy and the nice thing about this this is the microfiber cloth in fact this is the <laughs> this is the ink um, if you just go around 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 um, a couple times a couple different areas it literally comes off it's amazing I love it so um, yeah so I've got two of them so I thought well makeup brush and all that and then the last thing I did was I used a distress spray if you haven't got one of these I suggest you get one it really is a neat little water bottle spray bottle I think um, there are some other companies they've got um, a similar or the same sort of idea but basically depending on how you push the trigger depends on whether you get larger or smaller splatter or splodges of water it's a technical term so I landed up with these different splodgy bits now because this isn't distressing I actually didn't know and at this point it was all dry I didn't know whether it was even going to react at all um, because a lot of dyings will just the nice thing about them is that they dry really quickly but whereas distress ink is meant to react with water so that's the whole thing behind it whereas I wasn't sure with Stampin' Up! <laughs> um, I don't know why I wasn't sure because I've obviously never tried it before but well, I thought I thought I had but maybe not and I got this lovely splatter effect across it which was amazing so all you would do for that is you would then spray over the top um, and like I say with this kind of trigger you can either spray you can go really slowly and then you get these different size splodges as opposed to just spraying once if that makes sense I left it for about I don't know 10-15 seconds depends how long you want to leave it and then I actually used this microfiber cloth and just plopped it over the top to absorb the water you can use paper towels as well it does the same thing I had that next to me that's what I used um, so that's that's that part of it and that's basically the panel done so what I wanted to do is actually make it into a card and like I say I'm gonna do a sympathy card um, I just thought it was time <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I need to make a sympathy I don't need to make a sympathy card but I thought they are those kinds of cards that we often need or not often hopefully but you know what I mean like we we sometimes need but it's hard to make a card like that so I think when you're making it when it's not that kind of when you don't need to make it then it's easier when those moments happen 
um, to actually um, just grab the card and send it however you know to whoever needs it um, so this is blushing bride these colors here I don't um, oh actually I do have the matching cardstocks but blushing bride is going to work um, this measures four and a quarter by five and a half and it's a it started at 11 inches long and folded at five and a half um, it's kind of like a standard card for me <laughs> even though I'm not American <laughs> so I'm going to keep it really simple if I can find my tape and I'm just going to put adhesive all the way around let's see if I can beat my clock I am timing myself a bit because my videos tend to be really long <laughs> and I don't mind that so much if if I um, you know if I'm putting music to it but <laughs> I thought if I'm chatting you know you're not going to want to sit here for longer than well my camera will only allow 18 minutes so that's what we're heading for roughly anyway right so I'm just going to put this on I am doing this sideways this is just so that I can see what I'm doing and I put quite a bit of adhesive on there just because it's a it's slightly warped it's not badly warped which is I think another reason why I love this cardstock it doesn't really warp that much with all the moisture and that um, and it has an all fairness had a few days to properly dry but um, I just used um, I just used what? I just used extra adhesive to help it to stop it from lifting. Um, right. So if I can find it. We will be able to. Oh, I lost this one. Right. So this is. I actually really don't like this tape. <laughs> but this is that really sticky, super sticky tape. So I'm going to put this just along the edge underneath the image, like so, and because it is quite thin I'm going to do a layer on top here as well. Oh, tried to, so used to tapes tearing. Right. It will let me come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm on a time crunch. Probably go off right at the end. Oh, right at the right at that minute when you don't want it to go off. Right, let's see. If I line that up there, hopefully you get this. Somewhat straight on there. And then I'm just going to take some scissors that are just for this. So that's our little bit of lace and I thought that coordinated nicely with... Yep, it died. I have no idea where it cut off. So, <laughs> that's not bad. We're not, we're not far off, but you know, I'll have to work on my chatty bit. Um, I think I'm going to go with Highland Heather for this um, just because it's quite a um, it's not a super dark colour or anything but I thought it would match um, quite nicely with the background well obviously it matches the background but also um, it kind of leaves that as its own little image right, hopefully this will Be okay, let's see if I can line this up straight ish, she says. <laughs> you guys know I'm not very good with the straight lines. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. Not, not too bad. Right, so there you go, guys. Really simple. You can add extra stuff here, but I think sometimes with a sympathy card, especially, um, it's nice to kind of you want something well for me I want something that's very 
pretty and very subtle you know like with the colors really soft um, but also really simple I think it you know it doesn't make for me it doesn't make a lot of sense if there's so much going on the card because that's not the point of the card um, so I think keeping things simple either especially with a sympathy card um, makes sense for me so there you go guys um, one little sympathy card sadly ready to go I mean I really don't like the fact that I've had to make a sympathy card <laughs> well I've not had to but you know what I mean anyway I'm going to stop talking now so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you soon um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button if you want to see more from me um, and if you are already either new or you're coming back thank you for coming back and um, don't forget to check out the other videos I've done um, there's lots of different techniques and um, I do try and do a series each year with Christmas and Halloween um, specifically but I sometimes add in other other themed things like Valentine's Day or Easter or whatever it is so <laughs> be sure to check that out as well I'll see you in the next one bye